Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Lanning, live here at the Indianapolis Health Plex. Uh, super excited to be joining you guys today. I think today's session will be a lot of fun. I think it's going to apply to a lot of variety of age groups. So um, we're going to be talking today on corrective exercise with agility and balance. So you may be wondering if you're an athlete, you got downtime, you know, what are some ways that I can increase my speed, my agility, or maybe you're older, you're looking for increased balance, increased lower body strength. And today we'll cover all of that. Again, uh, like we do in all these videos, we're going to be showing you the most basic kind of foundational level as far as all the stability and balancing goes, and then how I check for different hip mobility, um, how you can stretch the hips um, around the muscles around the hips, uh, work on the core. Again, going back to that concept of proximal distal stability today. Um, and so, and then we'll also go through some examples that I, I've worked with athletes and they've asked me how to increase their speed and agility, whether that be on the tennis court, uh, basketball court, um, or just in, on the football field if they're doing different kind of movement patterns. So we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Um, the first example that I can show, um, an athlete recently um, that I worked with, uh, he was looking to increase his uh, mobility, speed, agility, overall balance, and reaction time on the football field. And so um, he was a high school athlete, and he was asking me, how can I do that efficiently, um, working on hip strength and balance at the same time? And so I'll, I'll show you how to do that if you're an athlete. I'll also show you today, if you're an older individual, um, how you can do this without the speed and quickness behind the two, still working on uh, balance and also strength at the same time. So um, you think about a football player, you think about different kind of motions that they may be going through. So if you're a defensive back or maybe a linebacker um, or maybe different sport, you're a basketball player, you're a guard and you're trying to defend someone going up and down the court, there's a lot of side to side diagonal movements involved with that. And so uh, what I usually tell people is reaction speed is, is equally as important as mobility and strength, right? So um, so last year, uh, before I graduated, uh, as part of a research study, we were talking about ACL tears, uh, speed and agility, and then also um, reaction time-based speed. And so, um, so what we did was we had the, the athlete um, respond to a computer based off the direction that we wanted them to cut, just like real life. Um, if you're a soccer player, um, sometimes you don't know what side the ball is going to go towards until the last minute and then you need to react as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so, for example, if you're a soccer player, going back to that example, or a football player, um, usually what I, I see with athletes is the slower individuals that are on the courts um, are the ones that do a lot of crossover, and they're more susceptible to injury based off of this. And so what I mean by that is, say that a ball is going over to the other side, and I can see it, and it shoots – even more to the horizontal side from where I'm standing right now. So if I see that and, I, and I'm working with an athlete, we're doing some time-based reaction things, we're working on strength, agility, and speed. What I'll see a lot of times on the playing field too is they will actually cross over to get to that ball. So it's a plant with this foot, the same foot that I'm, I'm going towards, or plant and then want to cross over last minute. Now, again, that could be just the way the brain is kind of wired. That's the way they've always done it. Um, but today, I want to show you some practical tips that you can do at home if you're an athlete. Um, you're bored, you're at home, you're not um, obviously doing a ton of working out. Uh, you want to get back into working out. Today's a great exercise for you. Um, and so, say I'm an athlete and I want to practice um, getting to that side that I was just talking about without crossing over. One way that you can do that is, is going forward, planting with the opposite side, and then going to that direction with the side of the foot that needs to go that direction. So instead of planting and then crossing, I'm planting with the opposite foot that I'm going towards, and then I'm crossing over like this. Um, that's quicker. As you can imagine, that's a quicker movement. And going that direction, versus I'm planting and then having to cross over like that. So, um, so we do a lot of this stuff um, in this facility. 
uh, that we can practice with athletes on. And again, it's a plant and then a cut. It's a pretty quick movement. It's, it's a simple movement. You can add a lot to this. Um, if you're in the garage or outside, it's a nice day today. Um, if you're a soccer player, football player, basketball player, some agility things that you guys can work on. Again, plant and then cut. You can do it on the other side. So again, we're gonna plant and then cut. The opposite way, just like this. You can also practice going backwards too. But um, if you think about a guard and you're defending someone and you're, you're constantly having to cross over in order to guard them, your efficiency and your agility and your speed is gonna be less. You're gonna be using more uh, muscles than what you need to. And therefore you're gonna be a step behind your athlete um, that you're defending, whether that be in football or basketball. So again, start on one side, have an idea of where you're gonna plant and then cut to. Again, I'm gonna plant and then cut. That step that I did there where I'm planting and cutting, that should be a big step. A lot of people too, when they start doing these exercises or these agility things, they wanna do a small step there to go towards the ball. Again, big step, big step there, and then that'll allow you to really explode into that movement. Um, that's just an example. So we're gonna kind of go back to a basic level here of first, how would I know if someone has limited hip mobility? So say I am working with that same athlete and say that, that you can just tell that their hip flexors are tight, their hamstrings are tight, um, their, their quads are tight, everything around the hip is just overall tight. We'll be more susceptible to an injury. So um, different ways I can check if someone has limited hip mobility, whether you're a young athlete or you're older, is by doing a few tests through stretches. So um, we talked about the Thomas stretch uh, last week, uh, but that is a stretch that you can do in bed before you get up in the morning, throughout your day, before you do a workout, and then after a workout as well. That will target the hip flexor. So again, the hip flexor um, allows us to go straight up over the top. And so I always tell people a trick, if you know what a muscle does, even if you don't know the muscle, the name of it, you know that doing knee to chest, you're flexing the, the knee to get there in the hip, stretching the opposite direction of the action of the muscle. So that's just kind of a quick tip. Uh, for any muscle that you, you're wanting to stretch, if it gets really tight, we talked about posture uh, last uh, Wednesday um, through the Arthritis Foundation and then through this live uh, video as well through the Indianapolis Health Plex. So if you need a reminder, kind of go back to that. Uh, but the Thomas stretch, again, there are a couple different ways that you guys can do that. Um, big thing that I always find is that I'll show you this one first sitting on the edge of the bed, knee to chest, and then relax that other side of the leg down. And I, again, I usually find that having someone kind of pull that leg down and then pull the, the knee into a flex position or a bent position usually really stretches that quad, that hip flexor up front. If you're by yourself, you have some trouble with that, what you can do, you can take a, um, a foam roll, um, a towel, um, a pillow, something to support the knee if you need to. And you can do almost a lunge and you're holding that stretch. And I'm actually stretching the opposite side from the side that you can see the side that's going straight back here is the side that I'm stretching. So I'll show that again here. Um, I think it's important to focus on hip mobility before we start any of these. Uh, exercises today, some of these agility, speed, balance, strengthening exercises, because you need to have that flexibility in order to go through some of these in order to maximize again um, some of that exercise. So um, again, I'm leaning forward, my chest is nice and upright, and I'm really trying to lean forward, trying to feel a stretch on that side of the leg um, that's going straight back. So those are two different things that you guys can do. Again, I find that this one's a little bit easier to do. Um, you have someone to help you out with the table stretch. Um, you guys can do that as well. So that's one thing I'll do with the athlete just to see kind of where they're at. Um, you think about how many athletes need to do knee to chest, whether it's a basketball player, you're jumping up, 
you're really needing to explode straight up, or maybe you're an older individual and you're, you're sitting a lot throughout the day and you're really tight through the hip. Um, some things that you guys can do is working on the hip flexor stretch that I just showed you there. Um, and I'll show you some warm up things again for lower level and then higher level athletes um, to kind of help on that too. So um, you guys can also do some lunges. So uh, lunges, if you can't get down on the knees, you can kind of do that same stretch. Again, just lean forward, just like that. Get a nice upright chest here. Try not to lean forward with that. Um, the hamstring stretch, um, so I showed you guys the other day. Um, really quick kind of review here. So um, one easy way to stretch the hamstrings is in a seated position. Um, you just do one foot out, and then you can use a towel and put it on the very end of the toes here, and then pull straight up. You'll get a little bit of a calf stretch with that too. So if you're sitting at your office a lot throughout the day, it's a nice quick exercise stretch that you guys can do there. Um, you can also kind of go straight up with it too. You might feel a little bit more of a stretch with that. Um, hamstrings, um, so in order to, to stretch the hamstrings, um, quick kind of education with that. Um, so you think about what the hamstrings do, right? So they go into backwards extension of the hip. So in order to stretch the hamstrings, you can lie on your back, and if that stretch didn't work too well for you, or if you want to do this in bed, um, you, can, you can bend one knee up if you want. I usually have people lay both flat, that way you're not compensating at the pelvis here. Uh, but then I usually have people with the towel roll, they'll pull, and then you can go straight up like that. As you can see, I'm kind of tight through the hamstrings there. Uh, but that's another way that you guys can do a hamstring stretch um, is just by going straight up like that with the towel. Uh, quad, so the quad stretch, um, another way that you can do that, you can do it standing or laying down. So the quad stretch will be a kind of foot to, to butt here, and you can use a towel roll back there. Um, if you're flexible enough, you can actually hold the foot and go straight Towards the butt there, hold that stretch, feels pretty good there. You can also do it standing as well. But again, I want to show you all these stretches because it's important that you know how to stretch around the hip here before we get started. Um, so again, the classic quad stretch uh, standing and if you hold on to something, you guys can do that as well. Um, and then basically uh, too, if I'm looking at hip mobility, um, I can also see through an athlete how high they can do knee to chest without compensating. So I usually tell the athlete, try not to move the spine, try to keep it up and down and just go knee to chest here. So a lot of times you'll see people kind of lean back in order to bring their knee up, um, just kind of another way um, to, and, and then the functional movement screen that we do with um, everyone here. Um, I highly recommend getting one of those done. They're absolutely free assessments. Um, but we go through some movements in addition to a hamstring stretch, like I just showed you on your back, um, doing, looking at your hip flexors um, and seeing uh, strength and mobility with those two, going up and over, looking at uh, balance, um, and you're going over a hurdle step to, and we'll be able to see all that from, from that uh, exercise. So I uh, highly recommend that you guys sign up for one of those once we reopen here. Um, some other things that I do, so whether it's an athlete um, or just someone that's older, uh, maybe you're middle-aged and you feel like a lot of those stretches you just feel overall tight with. Um, one thing that I like to do, and I've shown this in a previous video too, is just start by holding on to a chair if you need it and just practice that motion of going knee to chest, really try to bring that knee to chest, and then you'll go straight back, really try to bring that toe way back there, feel that stretch, and then come back up in your chest, and then back down. It's kind of a dynamic stretch warm up here. I like to do this a lot with people when they first come in. Again, there are different motions to this. So you can do straight forward and back. You can do to the side. So the next one that I usually do with, with individuals is a crossover, and then a lunge out. Okay. Crossing over straight out 
exaggerate some of these motions here, you'll feel a little bit more of a stretch. So kind of work diagonal, worked going straight up and down. Uh, and so those are some things. And then if you're an athlete, you feel like that's too easy. You get loosened up, nice warmed up. You can also take some, some weights, some peanut butter jars here, some cans of soup, and you can do that same exercise. This works on a little bit more balance. So you would come out to the side, so you can work a little bit of the upper arms here, and then get a little bit of a pec stretch here, and then do that same motion, straight up, and then really lean back, straight up, and lean back, with the upper body here, uh, focusing on that shoulder pinch, um, retraction of the shoulder blades, uh, like we talked about Wednesday and last week. Really important to bring the shoulders back to feel not only the rhomboids in between the shoulder blades working, but then also the pecs up front getting a little bit of a stretch too. So again, we'll do a few more of those. So we'll start with this leg, again, knee to chest, do different angles of that pec stretch, knee to chest, and then really reach back, knee to chest, and then reach back, do it on the other side here. So this time I'm gonna do a little bit of a stretch going straight up with the, the weights here. And in addition to that, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then down, knee to chest, and then back down. Again, you can do the diagonals that we just talked about. I guess it's more for an athlete here. You can add some speed, some cardio with this too, a little bit higher intensity. So straight up, and then out to the side, and back. Straight up, out to the side, straight up to the side, just like that. And then again, a little bit quicker pace. Straight up, knee to chest, then back down, knee to chest, and back down, just like that. Next one I'll show, and again, a lot of these exercises I'll show here today, if you're an athlete, you're higher level, um, and you want to be more functional with a lot of these, I'll show you some modifications to that. But what I start with is a sit to stand. And so I've got some weight, a weighted ball here. And so add a little bit of weight to your comfort and we'll do a quick sit to stand here. And uh, for athletes, I'll show you a little bit of a progression from this. Uh, but what I find is that even after about 10 of these, no matter how in shape you are, if you're doing it right with good proper form and technique, make it a little bit winded. So what I tell people is straight up, straight ahead with the weight, go ahead and stand up and then come back down, push through the heels, straight up and then back down. Now some things to focus on, here's the tight core. So that's why we're using the ball here. So doing a normal sit to stand and say you're leaning forward use your hands to really get that elevation to help out with the legs you're not really using a lot of your legs here and you're not maximizing that exercise so I always like to maximize the exercise whatever we're doing with whatever intensity level we need to do with the, the individual so so again straight up over top my back is nice and straight I'm working a little bit of the upper arms here, and then also the core, nice and tight core. Push through the heels, explode up, and then back down. Explode up, then back down. Let's go ahead and do a couple more of these here. Good. Again, you guys can use weights with this. Um, if you have dumbbells laying around, you don't have a medicine ball, Something like that, you guys can use that as well. A soup can, a peanut butter jar, something like that works really well. So after we do some sit to stands, and again, to add a progression to that, you can do a single leg, you can do one leg, two. That'd be a little bit tougher for um, older individuals to use two legs if you feel like you're losing balance with any of these. Um, so we went over sit to stand with the ball, single leg, if that's too easy, um, we can do some explosion jumps. So 
going back to some of the agility and speed here. So I always tell people, once we get that, once we get all the, the muscles warmed up, a little bit of a dynamic warm up here, you sit to stands, some other exercises, get your heart rate up. You want to do some explosions. So some different progressions to this. And again, you guys can use a ball in the hand to kind of work on that low back strength, some of that core strength and the shoulder strength too. Um, what I'll have people start with is your shoulder width apart with the feet, go down into a squat position and then explode up. Explode up onto your toes here. We're not going, we're not elevating our feet above the ground. We're just going right up to the toes and then back down, right up to the toes and then back down. Basketball players, this is really important to do. You think about going up for a rebound or a shot, that quick explosion is something to focus on there. You almost do it with one leg too. You put more of your weight through the one side, explode up with that one side. So you can kind of mimic the ball comes off the rim, you're exploding out to the side. Another exercise that you guys can do there. And then you can also do the explosion. So if you feel like, you know, my knees feel pretty good, not having any low back pain. With any of these, you can do the explosion with it too. So again, down into a squat position, and then you're exploding straight up. Down to a squat position, exploding straight up, just like that. So quick progressions that you guys can do for all those. Um, next one that we'll do is steps. So, so steps here. A lot of people have them in their house, um, on the front porch, something like that. Parks have them as well um, that you guys can use. And so let's get the cardio up a little bit. I love this exercise uh, for cardio and also strength. So again, you think about how many times a day, whether um, you're going up onto a curb, uneven surfaces, you go up onto something, you really need that hip strength in order to drive up. So, so with this, you're gonna go straight up. Pretty easy here, not too bad. And then again, if you want to add a little bit of cardio, higher intensity with this, again, go a little bit quicker. Quick with the feet and light with the feet. Try not to be real heavy with this. Nice and light with the feet here. So you guys can do that. With any athlete that I work with, and any individual, even if they're younger, older, is I work in all the planes. So we just showed you quite a bit of uh, going straight up and down, so uh, that vertical plane. And so what I want to show you next is the side plane. So, so just like we did there before, I always like to say, try to look up, that makes it a little bit tougher. Find a step and then go straight up, then back down, straight up, and then back down. You can add some intensity, or a little bit higher level cardio with this as well. So just like that. Um, one thing that you guys can do, in addition to that, again, hold the medicine ball out straight ahead, some weight to any of these exercises. We'll work a little bit more of the full body here. Um, but as far as cardio goes, again, going straight up, you can add knee flexion, like we just talked about here, really driving that knee up, and then back down, you can alternate, really drive that knee up, and then back down, just like that. So with anything, add a little bit of weight to it. Again, it'll make it a little bit tougher. So next one that I want to go over are crossovers. So, so there are times where an athlete does need to play catch up a little bit. And again, I'm going to show this from an athletic uh, population here first. I'm going to go back down to a beginner level. Um, I'm going to move this mat out of the way here. So crossovers here. So Many times we get, we get in this position, whether we're on the field, wherever, and we need to be able to move quick. We don't have enough time to maybe plan and then cross over. Um, sometimes we're doing some really crazy stuff. And sometimes you don't notice that until you go back, watch film, and you're like, wow, some of my movement patterns when it comes to functional movement um, are all over the place. And so that's why it's a rewiring of the brain when we were talking about doing the plant and then using the other step real quick in order to go out to the side. So this exercise here, um, 
You're going to start on one side and you're going to go back and then forward and then land on one leg and then cross and then land on one leg. So, um, so we'll kind of go over this here again, kind of again break it down really nice and slow here. So the leg that you're going to cross with is always the outside leg and it's always going to go behind the other leg. So in this case, this outside leg is going to go out underneath and behind here and then back. So and then go back together and then straight up to the other side and then back together, straight up, back together, straight up. If you're looking to get into a dance class, this is great. Cardio as well. So any of those with weddings coming up, I got one in August. So it's kind of get me ready for that. So this is kind of a moderate pace here. But again, when you, you get up into a level um, where this gets too difficult, again, go slower. But they think go slower with the exercise. So again, breaking this down, crossing behind, going back, and then I'm going straight up, working on balance. Hold that position for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll back and then cross in behind and back straight ahead. Driving that other knee up. Great exercise for someone that's just working on uh, prevention of falls here. So again, you can hold on to something if you want to put a chair here and then back over where you'll be on one leg over here in front so that you have something to hold on to. That works great too. But again, I'm always crossing behind with this. So cross behind and then forward back. Across behind, back, across behind, back. Again, speeding this up here a little bit. Just like that. Again, you can use some weight out in front. Good exercise there as well. If you're doing a lot of hip strength and mobility, that kind of stuff. Monster walk jumps. So I've, I've talked about this before. Monster walks, one of my favorite exercises because you think about how functional this is to everyday life, whether that's you're an athlete, you're higher level, or you're an older individual, you wanna prevent falls. Um, and so you think about how many times throughout the day, and I think about this a lot, like how many times am I doing some of these movements that I'm talking about here? And a lot of them, I, I go back and I'm like, wow, I'm not isolating a muscle with these exercises. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm adding a combination and making it functional. And that's what we're really about here at the Indianapolis Health Plex is making things functional to everyday life. You know, if you're just coming in and you're just working out, you're doing exercises um, and you're just working on isolated muscle groups, not saying that's bad, but at some point you need to turn that into function, right? So there's this idea of simplicity, isolation, a muscle, but then function. So, um, so when we talk about function, with some of these things, we're adding stability, balance, strength, we're adding a lot of different things to it. And then in return, you're gonna get more mobility within the hip. So it's kind of a, a combination of two different things. And you can't do a lot of these exercises, staying injury uh, prevention on the injury prevention route, unless you add mobility to it. So that's why these mobility exercises function are so, about so important to do. So um, with monster walks here, um, again, if you're older, um, you can do a little bit of knee bend with these. You can even start straight up and down and just go out to the side holding on to something. Again, the big key here is my toes are always pointing straight ahead with these. So I'll, I'll show from a side angle here. Straight out to the side. It's not straight up and out. And sometimes it's nice to also use a mirror. So like here, I'm, I'm watching myself while I'm doing this exercise. It's also really helpful to hint, you know, if you're doing exercise, you don't know if you're doing it right, if you're by yourself, um, get in front of a mirror. Um, sometimes that feedback will always be really good for people. So that's just kind of another uh, tip there. But I'm going out to the side, and I'm straight here. And you should really feel it on the side of the hip, a little bit back towards the glutes here, just a little bit. Um, but again, what I see a lot of times, again, this very basic foundation, beginner level, is a lot of people like to lean and then go out to the side. With that, it's much easier to do than trying to keep that spine nice and straight up and then go straight, straight out to the side, just like that. Um, turn that into more function. Monster walks, after you get that down, 
shoulder width apart, a little bit of knee bend. And then when you go out to the side, keeping shoulder width apart during this whole motion. Again, I know I've showed this exercise quite a bit. I'll turn it into more agility today. Um, and so again, getting down into a little bit deeper squat position and going out to the side, going quicker. Again, great for athletes here, especially if you're on the baseball diving. If you're a shortstop, you think about going over to the side quite a bit here. You need that lateral quickness. Same thing in tennis. If you're um, hitting a forehand, backhand, think about how much side to side movements that's, that are needed in tennis. These are kind of great exercises to focus on, um, as well as the diagonal stuff that we showed earlier. So, um, speaking of diagonals here, um, you can go forward and back. So, doing that, playing to the diagonal motion here. For athletes, you can just use one leg. If you need to, you can bring that other foot down. Again, we're working all different planes here with this hip mobility. You know, a lot of times people will just work in one plane. We're going to work on all the planes. Transverse plane, sagittal frontal plane, we're talking about here. And then you want to turn that into function. Go ahead and grab a ball and show it here. So weighted ball, put it on the hip pocket that you're going to land on. So start on this one side. I'm going up and over, transferring that weight and the ball to the other side. You'll be surprised with how much balance it requires when you use a weighted ball to do these exercises. So and start side to side first before you do the diagonals. Kind of give this a try. Again, one side, hop it to the other side, nice and quick. So it's a combination of quickness, but you also want to be controlled here, right? So, you know, a lot of people want to add quickness before technique and posture. You want to make sure that you're nice and slow and controlled. Once you do that, again, function. And add side to side, weight here. You can do over the top, basketball player, over the top, just like this here. So again, make sure that my core is working. Weights are kind of helping with shoulder mobility here as well. Uh, chops with the ball here. So, so what I have people do with I'll bring back the mat here. You can do this on one knee or you can do a standing. I'll show both ways. But take a weighted ball, keep the arms straight, go up and out to the side, diagonal motions here. A lot of people want to do a lot of rotation with this. Sometimes that's not always great if you've had back problems. So I always have people nice and straight up and down here. You're using a little bit more of the, the shoulders with this. You're using your core. That's what we're really focused on here. So on Wednesday, when I did the video for the foundation, the Arthritis Foundation, and then also the video for here at the Indianapolis Health Plex, we talked a lot about TA activation. So go back and check that out if you missed that video. Just the very basics of how to engage your core and then kind of progressions from there. So, so again, in order to engage that TA, draw that belly button in. So draw it in while you're doing this exercise. So draw in, keep the back nice and straight, go up and out to the side. And what you'll find is that if you use the appropriate weight with this, you'll start to really feel this exercise quite a bit. And then you can add a little bit more speed behind this as well. So I like this exercise, especially for golfers. So you think about a golfer, um, you think about the rotation that they need. And so when you talk about a lot of the pec stretching, talking about rotational stuff, um, a lot of times you need that priming, that warming up of the back in order to get um, some of these exercises done safely. If you're in between a golf club or driver and you need that rotation component. So um, golfers can do the rotation too. So you're starting down low, maybe you're exploding up with it. Again, nice and slow, but it's warming everything up. It's very functional based. Again, nice and slow, going down, looking down, and then straight up with the chops there. You can do those on both sides. Uh, I want to finish up really quick with what I talked about at the very beginning with athletes. So reaction time speed is really important. So there's a lot of research out there that shows that reaction speed um, with like ACL tears and different uh, injuries is almost 
as important, if not more, than muscle imbalances. So, um, so making sure that you're practicing hip mobility, hip strength, balance, and coordination, like we've showed you today, proper form and technique, but then also reaction speed stuff. So there are different balls out there that you can bounce, that go different directions, um, that kind of have different knobs on them. Um, what I always like to do too is I'll get right up there with the client and do different kind of partner time-based reaction stuff. So if I'm doing the exercise that I showed earlier where I'm doing side to side, I'm throwing a ball with them and I'm throwing them different directions of things. And that's what you guys can do at home too. If you have a, um, a teammate maybe that um, also wants to work on some of this functional exercise and maybe you're older and you just you, you have a spouse that you both want to work on some functional exercise, work on fall prevention. Um, definitely use a chair for this, but if you feel like some of these are advanced, um, just throw a ball to each other. Stand on one leg, stand on two legs, and do some of these exercises. Or just toss some balls to each other. Some of this stuff can be pretty fun um, when you talk about functional exercise. So, again, just kind of a recap with things. Um, when you're an athlete and you're focusing on that, that side step to get over to a soccer ball, or maybe your tennis player, again, um, when you plant on one side, do that big step with the other side that you're going towards, a lot more efficient than if you're going planting and then having to cross over. Sometimes you'll need to just because you're behind on a ball, but it's more efficient and quicker if you can plant to the opposite side that you're going to. And so just working on that motion in there, prevention of injury, quickness, speed, and agility, just one tip that you guys can do. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you guys and hope to see you guys uh, very soon. And stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and have a great weekend.